Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd, and this is my interview one-on-one -on -one with Alex. From Malevolence, yes, he is the lead singer. Now they're wrapping up a European tour. They're about to head over here to the States. They have a new album coming out very, very soon. It's probably some of their best work yet. In fact, I know it is. Why? Alex told me about it. Want to hear more about it? Of course you do. Now don't get me wrong, Tank the Tech did a huge interview with him and I watched the whole damn thing. All 90 minutes of it. And they talked about everything that's actually relevant. Luckily for all of you, rarely do I do anything that's relevant, but I can promise you two things. Number one, we're going to make Alex laugh. And number two, we're giving away three amazing prizes from Malevolence, and Alex is going to help us choose the winner. Want to know how we're going to do it? Then watch my interview. Duh. Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd. Welcome in, and it's a very special day. It's a double slathering. Is that a good word? Probably not. Alex is probably going, oh shit, what did I get myself into? Of malevolence. Now, this is Alex. Alex, say hi. What's up, guys? Wow. He's charismatic, isn't he, ladies? You gotta love that. Alex, are you married? I'm not married, no. No, no. Oh, and, uh, he's... I have a wonderful girlfriend, though. Oh, well, yeah. So that means all you girls from Oklahoma, stay away from Alex. That's a steel, <laughs> that's a steel Panther joke if Alex doesn't get it. I got it, I got it. There you go, that's my boy. All right, so <laughs> off the bat, I got to say I'm a little perturbed that we didn't get to talk before you and Tank talked because I'm a huge fan of Tank. He's a hero of mine. Him and I talk a lot. And when I saw that he did an interview with you, I was like, okay, cool interview. He does those. And then he showed the link and he sent me a link to the interview and I went, it's like an hour and a half. And then he showed me the chapters and I'm like, there's nothing left to talk about. So I had to dig. Uh, I, no, no, we've, we've got loads to talk about, bro. We, we'll find some stuff, don't oh, we? Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I, I looked. I, I, I called your mom. And look, Alex disappeared. No, uh, I called your mom. She sent me some baby pictures. And um, no, that's not true at all. Uh, your nan did. Um, speaking of nans, I, I have an idea for you before we start this. And it, this has kind of been hitting my head for a while. From the first time I saw, the first time, the first experience, the first thing I saw from you guys was... Um, actually on broken glass I, I didn't do a reaction to it because i watched tanks react to reaction to it and that was the first time i saw something from you guys and i was like there's something real there's something real about these guys i got to know more but unfortunately i can't do a reaction to something i've already seen because that would be kind of cheeky and fake and bullshit so i was super excited to see life sentence and you know what, dude? And, and so, yeah, so, sorry to put in. I, I think your reaction to Life Sentence was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I enjoyed it so much. The number of cheeky ribs I had in line for just Conan himself, you're going to be like, damn it, I wish he was here, but he's not. Because, yeah, he does look like the lorry driver that pulls up for your concerts and just unloads the stage. Now, when this reaction airs, It'll be, I believe, on Wednesday coming, and it'll be right before I do a reaction to Stillwater's Run Deep. You guys are from cool. Sheffield, yeah. right? Yeah, man, Sheffield. Okay. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, I was born in Cardiff uh, in Wales, and then I moved to Sheffield when I was uh, around six or seven years old. Oh, so you're Welsh. You're like legit. Yeah, yeah I was oh, yeah, born, born and raised in, in Wales, and then there. Uh, but yeah, I you know this Sheffield's my hometown, Cardiff's my hometown. I, I class them both as as like quite close to my heart. So yeah, I had to look it up to make sure I didn't wear like a Leeds football club jersey. I didn't want to, you know. See, I did my research. See, 
Um, oh, no. Hang up on you, bro. <laughs> See? <laughs> Call it. I was, that was a good one. Okay. For those who do not live in the UK, and a lot of you that, that watch my videos are not from the UK, and those who are from the UK, love each and every one of you, you're going to get the joke that the, um, you have Sheffield United and you have the Leeds Football Club, and the Sheffield United believes that the Leeds Football Club are wankers, and that's the end of that story. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah. I need you guys to do me a favor. I need you guys to make a T-shirt that when you go home and play in in Sheffield, that it, it has malevolence on the front or on the back, whichever you want. But on the opposite side, it's got to say Sheffield, motherfuckers, and and just make sure that only people from your hometown can wear those to shows, so they can say we are malevolence because the hometown crowd. I mean, come on, that's. You know, that's that's your stomping ground, right? Yeah, you know what, actually? Our first ever piece of merch, like 12 years ago, um, had on the back of it, let me just get this right, let me try and remember it. <laughs> yeah, so it had, it had a malevolence, malevolence logo on the front, which was like made on paint or something like that. And But then on the back, it said in like script fun, Sheffield Shred. And we've been talking about bringing that shirt back for like the last 10 years. And I think now's the time. Now, if you're kind of like wary about putting Sheffield motherfuckers on the back and, and you're afraid Nan's going to think you're taking a piss, you can just, you know, take the U and turn it into like one of those and signs or percent signs. You know, to, you, know just, you can keep it cheeky without being over the top. And that's fine. But I want to talk about the album. This okay. album is something that every track from it hits like a brick but yet you really feel good about it and when when I when agree. I, I agree well when we first when i first checked you guys out i think i immediately went to older albums and i went all the way back to 2013 and i was checking out some old grainy youtube videos because that's what they were back then and i'm like the development is there and I'm a folk music guy. So this whole me metal music thing, I was raised on it. I was raised on the classics, you know, Motorhead, you know, and Metallica before they, you know, turned the corner and things like that. And then I got away from it during the 90s. And during new metal, I really got away from it. And then in the last three years, I see all these bands like Malevolence, like Ginger, you know, bands that could play heavy metal or thrash metal or whatever genre you're going to throw out there, there's always something in the back, something that reminds you from your childhood, something that says, this is not, and it's funny, I don't want to say this because I don't want to piss off the wrong people, it doesn't seem like it's label driven. Which is a funny Absolutely thing for not. which is a funny thing for me to say, considering this meeting is happening. Thank you, Nuclear Blast Records. So, uh, <laughs> but but okay, I saw the tank interview, and I want you to tell my viewers, even though most of them are tank viewers, and if you're not, you're an asshole. Um, how you develop the sound for this new Malevolence album? Because if people know who you are. They're like, man, is this the same guys? Because it's a real big step in a different direction. I guess, I mean, the way I've, the way I've kind of viewed it is where, is if you are a Malevolence fan, then this is the album that you knew was coming. Um, you know, I think we're like, we've kind of, we've, we've found our sound now we like over the past few albums you know we've there's, there's been a kind of amalgamation of so many different things and so many different influences that um you know they, they they've they've all shone through in their own right but sometimes we've maybe not, not pieced them together and kind of gelled them as as like a whole piece of art you know with the weather special especially like the now the first two well, the first two albums they they kind of they 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 go on a mad journey like some songs are just crazy like they they have such different structures and different influences whereas on this album we've really focused on trying to 
bring all these different elements together, but do it in a tasteful way. And we've really had to thought of, kind of thought about song structures um, and how songs sit together as an entire body of work, which is something that I think has come with age and we've come with experience, you know. Um, and I think it's just one of those things where, yeah, we've over time we've really kind of honed our craft, so to speak. Um, and we've really, you know, we've, we've always, always, I've said this before, we've, we've always been one of those bands that we, we don't try and stick to our comfort zones. We like to do new things, we like to push ourselves and, and just see what we come up with. And I feel like this album really is a demonstration of our strength and our power as a unit, as a band, and what we can deliver when we, you know, when we 100% put all of our minds together. And, uh, and I'm super proud of what we've, we've, we've put together, really. Is, um, I feel like this is 100% our best work today. I feel like it demonstrates, like you say, the progression from the first album to Malicious Intent. And yeah, I'm, I'm just super proud of it. I'm, I'm really proud of it. And you know, it's, it, I, I can honestly say with my hand on my heart that I love every single song on this album. And yeah. Super proud. <laughs> let, 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 let's get the uh, wankers that are not in the room out of the way. And let's just talk about Josh and Conan real quick. I've always loved their aggression, especially uh, Conan's, because um, the joke was, and you laughed about it, the joke was is that Conan looks like the lorry driver that drives the lorry that they just open up the sides and play it play a song in the middle of a parking lot and everybody in Sheffield shows up and just freaking goes music festival in the middle of a parking lot somewhere. And that's funny and it's cute. But when I went back and I listened to like on broken glass and then life sentence and I see Conan harmonizing with you in a melodic way. And I'm just like, dude, I didn't expect that from that guy. That guy just looks like, I'm going to play this song, I'm going to go get a pint, and I dare a fucker to get in my face. I mean, that's how, what he, that's how he looks. But, but then, let's talk about Josh. Okay, so you have Conan holding down that rhythm guitar section, laying the foundation that everyone knows malevolence brings to the table. Josh, when he's not trying to break his damn neck, starts playing this phrasing, this melodic tone over phrasing this finger work over the top of the heavy riffs that Conan is putting down and it adds a dimension. It adds a conceptual like, hey, they're not just blasting through this song and Alex isn't just challenging life in general. They're telling a story. There, there's, a, there's a development in the sound and you're like, okay, this is deeper than I thought. This is deeper than what I expected. So because that's coming on, I'm seeing it in a lot of other bands. And so I have to ask you, like I ask everyone, how much of this album is touched or impacted by the last two years and the events of the last two, two and a half years? I'd say about 80% of it. Um, however, with that being said, we had, um, we had some of the songs actually written, well, like the foundations of the songs written maybe three, four years ago. Um, so when we decided to put out a, a three-track EP um, back in 2020, we, uh, right at the start of the pandemic, we, we knew that we wanted to put a release out, but we weren't ready or in a position to put a full length out. Um, and we'd already been working on quite a few songs, so, um, from the songs that we chose for that EP were basically like what we felt at the time was the best demonstration of the development of malevolence, the best tracks which we could put out there and say, hey, look, this is this is where we're going with this. This is what we're, we're capable of, plus so much more. So um, the songs that didn't make it onto the EP formed the foundation of the album. Um, so like I said, yeah, three, four <laughs> years ago, the, the foundations were... We're, Wait, we're the leftovers or this amazing album? <laughs> Wait, the stuff that didn't make it on the EP is actually going to be one of the best albums you guys have ever put out and one of the top albums that not myself, 
other people that have way bigger followers than me are going, this is a groundbreaking album for 2022. And I'm like, all right, that works. So, <laughs> but okay, so I, I say this a lot to people. So the last two and a half years sucked, especially in the UK and around the world. The lockdowns, the whole not being able to, especially not being able to play live, connect with your fans. And I say, nothing good can come out of something like that. But as we're entering into 2022 and we see the stuff that's coming up towards the middle and end of this year and next year, maybe something good will come out of it. And that's art, the creativity and music. Because every time we've had a tragedy in human existence, the bards, the musicals, the, the Shakespearean plays all come from tragedies. The, the just horrible situations for humans. And I see all this crazy music being brought out by all these bands this year, next level. And, I'm, and some people say, well, that's because they were stuck at home for two years. I said, no, being stuck at home for two years just turns you into Pantera. You get really pissed. Um, <laughs> but I think it allows you to introspect on yourself. Alex looks inside Alex. And then he looks over and he looks at Conan and goes, we got to talk, man. Like, I need to share some stuff. And you guys do that amongst yourselves. And then at some point, it, it comes out of your music. And if it doesn't, and if the album is pre-produced, I've seen music that was recorded in 2020, but when it comes out this year and you see the band go play it live, there's just a, let's get the hell back on this kind of feel. And it's just epic. Yeah, 100%. I feel like, what's the old adage? Tough times build tough speed. But tough times builds tough people. And I feel like that really shines through with us, especially with this record. You know, when we, when I was, when we've been writing the, the lyric, like all of the lyrical content on the album comes from a, a place of, you know, positive aggression. And there's songs on there which are for those days where you, you need that extra bit of motivational music to really get you through your day, you know? And there's songs on there for, like you said, for um, self-reflection. Um, but I feel like you're right in saying, you know, the, the, it's, you almost look at the, the last two years and you think, Jesus, what, what good can possibly come out of that? Um, and, you know, it's been such a horrible time for so many people. But then you just, you, you look, for me personally, I look back and I thought, right, how have I used that time to be productive? How have I, you know, try and, how have I communicated what I'm feeling into the music? And I think there, was, there, were, there were definitely points in the lockdown for me personally where, like, you know, I, I didn't have that positive outlook. I felt quite almost negative as such, but... Uh, but there's definitely been moments where I've thought, you know what, this is this is my time to shine. This is the opportunity that we've been given. Let's let's make the most of it. Um, and I feel like we definitely did. Like you know, we we we, we put our heart and soul into this during like one of the most challenging years or challenging years of our whole lives. So um, yeah, man, it's 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 it's, it's definitely been. I feel like with Melanus as well. It's we, we've we've almost been kind of fortunate to be brutally honest like we put out an EP at the start of the first lockdown and when everybody was stuck inside and was stuck at home with nothing to uh, I think your pop tarts are ready <laughs> not mine but my kids <laughs> yes <laughs> life goes uh, on <laughs> yeah man, do, do your thing I'm jealous um, but no sorry I was saying yeah I think you know we've We've been very fortunate that the, the EP came out at the start of the lockdown. Everybody was stuck inside, wanting new music, wanting new music videos to watch. Uh, and that really, honestly, helped our band a lot. And um, it, it, the growth of the band over the last two years has been kind of mind-blowing, really, like how much we've developed, like, and like all these new people just discovering our music. And, you know, um, while it is, uh, yeah, like I said, it's been a tough two years. I feel for the whole music scene in general, it's given everybody an opportunity to step back and be like, right, now's our time to step up. Now's our time where we can get creative and you know see see what we what we can do. 
All You've right. been around, you guys have been around long enough, you know, 12 plus years now, where you've interacted with multiple labels. And one thing that I've noticed, especially right now, is that the days before, you know, when you were a young man, because I'm a lot older than you, <laughs> um, <laughs> when bands did everything labels told them to, this is what's going to sell money, this is what's going to put half 50 50 girls and boys in the in the stadium this is what we can put on the radio this is what we can know that malevolence never really sat in that but now you're seeing where labels are saying hands off how creative can you be mm. now, i'm not saying you got to be like troll fest and put flamingo costumes on and go play at eurovision you don't have to do that and you don't have to go as far as electric callboy and go mm. over the top and make the same song tear different ways. And it, it, Ooh, it a little bit, little bit see, little bit see that. Yeah, right? <laughs> but here's, yeah, no, I got to do an interview with Trollfest tomorrow. Let's not talk about it. I, I, cause I have that. And then I have a therapy appointment right after. Um, cause that's, that's the, I think they're going to take a piss on me. So, um, but not, not like on Pina Colada. You should check that out. It's pretty funny. So, uh, <laughs> what's up with Europeans in the crazy videos? I don't know, but, um, I think that malevolence, creativity-wise, because I had once I heard the first the first one after you know after I did you know when I did when I did life sentence I was like you know I I really need to dig into this because is this something different because I'm seeing so many labels take their hands off of bands and say what can you create that you're not going to go on the radio anyway. And we have this platform called YouTube. We've got Spotify and Amazon Music and iTunes. So technically, we can reach the world anyway. Let's make music that's straight from your heart. Let's make music that is straight from all the angst and emotions that you have. And we're not going to worry about the radio. We're going we're gonna to hit people rather than trying to hit radio stations. And I think yeah, that's a absolutely, big thing. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. It's, you know, we... With this new record, it, we've, we've really been given kind of free reign on the whole creative process. And you, um, we will mean, obviously, we've, we've partnered up with Nuclear Blast for this re release uh, with our own imprint and Nuclear Blast. And from the moment that we've, you know, expressed interest in making this happen, the whole team behind Nuclear Blast have just been so on board and so invested in the project but also just being like what can we do to help you like name it and we'll do it like and they've just been great like really great to work with and it's really refreshing kind of seeing a big label like you know a, a legacy label like nuclear blast you know it's a, a label that we've all grown up alongside and like, yeah they have sap they've got sabaton for god's sakes you know and sabaton uh it's funny the when you said they got a hold of you and said, what do you need? What can we do? How far you want to go? Mm. I'll be honest with you. Say they did the same thing for me. Cause they were like, Hey, you talk to, you know, 250,000 people every month. They, they click on your channel and they love metal. Like you love metal. What can we do? And I'm like, show me all the great stuff. <laughs> I don't, I don't get your head get big because they did go like can you please I was like I would love are you kidding me I asked them could I interview Malevolence and they were like yeah. Yeah, absolutely and I was like because here's the thing when you guys announced the new album I bought three I pre-ordered three vinyls thank you I really appreciate that I'm not keeping any of them I, I remember you saying, I, you know, when, when I saw your reaction channel, I was just like, this guy's sick. <laughs> so we got to wrap this video up because I can't keep you any too much longer. So let's do this real quick. I'm gonna add, if you, we, we, can, we, can, we can go a bit longer if you want. I'm not in particular much stuff. So. Okay, so, good. Yeah. Then let's skip that shit and go to this shit. Just you, give me one second, though. I do need my phone charger. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was not prepared. <laughs> That's my line. That's usually what I say. <laughs> it 
Is that flipped for you now? Yeah, That's and and now I have you in widescreen and not narrow telephone. Is that bad? Uh, it depends. Before you look taller, now you look chunky. I'm fucking with you, dude. I'm messing with you now. All right, so let's do a significant, important question first, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. Here we go. You're coming to the U.S. in what, like a month? Yeah. It's right there. It's right there. For the, for the many, many Malevolence fans that already know you, they're probably going to be about half your crowd because you're going to get an influx of new people, right? What can they expect when they go to see Malevolence? Because all we see are your videos and two things come to mind. Number one, a tractor auction in the middle of Ohio with metal music because it just looks like there's people in a field. Or don't go walking downtown Sheffield in the middle of the night. You may either get mugged or run into a metal show because that that's all we know over here so what can they expect from malevolence when you guys arrive here energy pure energy yeah we whether we play a show to five people or five thousand we will bring the same energy the same height as no matter what and that's something that we really really pride ourselves on we are, we are a live band. We, we, we thrive in the live environment. And I think anybody who's seen Malevolence will testify to that. Um, so, yeah. You know, Sheffield gets a bit of bad rap. We don't, um, we don't necessarily make it look like the nicest place ever. But honestly, it is quite a nice place. Hey, props uh, to Sheffield, man. I, I've driven through there. You guys are, yeah. you guys are twice as clean as Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham's a shit old <laughs> I just needed you to say it because I'm not local and I don't want to get my ass kicked but come on think about it people always think Birmingham Black Sabbath you know big bad awesome heavy Birmingham but they don't realize Sheffield is just as industrial it's just as creative and tough and you're from Cardiff you don't get any tougher than Wales period that's just <laughs> hardcore people all the way around I've seen The Crown on Netflix. I know what's up. No, um, that's really all we know. No, seriously. Yeah. Americans, most of our UK knowledge comes from The Crown. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's true. No, I mean, all we... Uh, you know what, man? I, I, do, I do quite enjoy that show. I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not someone who kind of enjoys them. I don't know what they call drama, dramatization, some series, whatever you call them, but I do quite enjoy that one. No, no, seriously. Uh, the US thought process of Cardiff and Wales is this. They're tough people who live and they, they mine coal and they, they live hard lives, but they're super proud because of their heritage. And screw you, Prince Charles, you're gonna say it in Welsh. You know, it's just, that's all we know. It's not really like that, but that's what we think. So no, okay, so energy. That's good. We love energy. Uh, good luck doing that no, in Iowa. When you get to Iowa, yeah, that's where Slipknot comes from. They're, they're not like, they don't wear masks and do crazy stuff because it's fun. They're from Iowa. It's either grow corn or metal. There's nothing in between. So it's just get ready for that. That's going to be a good show. Well, okay. Then, then, to be honest, then if, coming, if it's an you know, industrial, then we probably have a little bit in common. They probably well, understand um, the knob, the knob and grip more than others. So that's I noticed you have no southern stops, no Texas, no Florida, no New Orleans. But it's okay. Not yet. But Not where yet. you're going? You're going Pennsylvania, Ohio, double Illinois. I mean that's that's Rust Belt. And when you're talking about Rust Belt, that's that's Birmingham, Sheffield. You know that's industrial us it, the crowd will be the crowd will be able to connect in the same way you know just just tell them you know you know just be like you know just be yourself and that crowd's just gonna go nuts for you let's do some let's give away some malevolent stuff 
Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you three questions. Do not answer them on this interview because we're going to post the interview and people have to go into the discord and give me their answers. Okay. And the first three people to answer these questions correctly, they win one of the custom vinyls, not the black ones. No, no, no. I got one of each one of those beautiful vinyls of malevolence's epic album okay first right. question okay what, what was the first concert or show live music you ever went to in your life people are gonna have to guess it's not gonna be easy please don't make it someone like obscure that nobody except from like your middle school would know like <laughs> Now, do you know what? I'm not going to tell you who it was, but I will tell you that in, I broke my rib in the mosh pit to it. So you know it's, you so know it's a heavy one. Th that's, that's a pretty good one. That's a really good hit. And then everyone's just going to put suicide silence? No, dude, that would be... T no, it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't work like that. Eddie would love you for it. Okay, so question two. Favorite guilty pleasure food-wise that you know you need to stop because come on we're not getting any younger and and you know what is your favorite guilty food pleasure what's what's the one snack that if you could have a writer because you know you don't <laughs> you would have waiting for you every time you show up in a dressing room okay that was a very rock star question by the way that was my that was my kiss gene simmons question you know what do you need to have in your dressing room like i would never want that crap that's that's a kiss thing and you're like that's why i asked it okay number three and the hardest one of all <laughs> if you could collaborate with anybody alive or past no no don't speak for conan he probably wants to do some shit with tenacious d because, you know, they all match the same physique. But, Alex. <laughs> I had to take a piss. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I, I've, I've been holding that one in for like ever. Because this was supposed to be his question. I was supposed to ask Conan, who would be your epic collaboration? And you can't say Tenacious D because they all, because you all have the same shape. So, for Alex, <laughs> for Alex, what is Alex's dream collaboration? Don't answer because this is all secrets. So now everyone knows that if you want to win from me, I bought them. Nobody gave them to me. I just thought this band was worthy of it because this is some shit. And I'm not taking a piss. All right, I've got, I've got to wait. Before you go, I've got to correct you on your, your I'm taking the piss. It's taking the piss. Taking the piss. Happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, again, English is my first language. It's also my second, third, and fourth, and I suck at all of them. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just teaching in the in the British slang way of talking, as such. And hey, boys and girls, if you want to learn how to English slang talk, I'm thinking Sheffield or Cardiff will probably help you out on that one. I mean, don't yeah, go to Leeds. That's that's just shit. Anyway. God, if God help me, if a good band comes out of Leeds, I'm screwed. You know, you know what we'd say in Sheffield, though. We wouldn't even say taking the piss. We'd say taking piss. Yeah, just those extra consonants. Why do you need them? We're not. There's actually less. Yeah, let's, no, no. Get rid of those extra consonants. Just, just you oh, know, yeah, let's yeah, get, yeah. let's just get to the point. Let's just get to the piss. Let's just done. We're done. That's it. Um, yeah. as a Cajun, I can tell you that we do the same thing. Uh, but we do it with a, a weird bastardized French, which is, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have those three questions. Remember, in Discord, after this interview is completed, first person in the Discord that goes to Malevolence Vinyl section, and you have to put in either one, two, or three for which question, because if you put, you know, Paul McCartney for his snack, that's just fucking weird. All right. Is there anything you want to tell everyone before we go? Because I want to make sure you get the last word. New album out May 20th, Malicious Intent. Um, wait, 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 wait. 
Okay, now it's on the screen. <laughs> You're pointing in the wrong direction, Dick. No, I'm kidding. I'll put it wherever you pointed. That oh well, shit. Now it's gonna cover the whole screen. No, okay. <laughs> Keep going. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, new album, Malicious Intent, May 20th. Uh, as I said before, me and the boys worked super hard on this album, and I really feel like I can stand a lot, stand with my heart across my chest and say this will be an album that will stand the test of time for sure. Um, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, it's a banger from start to finish. And it's all been made possible by everyone who's supported this band over the last two years, three years, 12 years. So thank you to everyone who continues to support what we do. Uh, I'm still blown away by the, the amount of love that we, we get. And this in this last week alone, we've got to do things that I never thought was possible. Like I'm in Glasgow at the arena, uh, Hydro Arena right now. We're going to play one of the, another one of the biggest shows that we've ever played tonight, and it's all down to the people, you know, like yourselves, showing love, reacting to our videos, and just spreading the word. And I can't be thankful enough. And also, like I said, your reaction video to live centers is probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen. They, uh, the the first that I sent it to all, I sent it to our friends in the group chat. And the the first thing they all were all laughing about was like within the first thirty seconds you just got nice chains, bro. Yeah, <laughs> wait till Wednesday. It's gonna be good. All right, Alex, thank you so much. Appreciate you creative editing because my internet fucking died. Uh, just as we we're wrapping up as well. <laughs> oh, I can edit this. Luckily, it's not like a live thing or whatever. I could just edit this. It's cool. So let me go back and just do like um. Okay, I'll, we'll just pop in. All right, um, let's just be honest. Let's not lie to the people because it's being, you know, being honest in art is important. Um, my internet died <laughs> and I was able to reconnect and we got back with Alex. I was right in the middle of telling you, thank you for everything. And I um, hope you guys have a, you guys have a show tonight, right? Yeah, so tonight is the last, tour, uh, uh, last day of our tour with Architects. Uh, Ooh, sleep token. They have a new one out too. I watched it. It's good. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 do you know what? This has been one of the, my favorite tours we've ever done. We played some of the biggest shows on this tour. Like Friday night, we were in London, and it was ten thousand people sold out in Alexandra Palace. And um, we had one of the biggest circle pits I've ever seen at a show. Full stop. Uh, uh, so, video or it didn't happen? Just saying. Anyway, I've got a video. <laughs> of course, Alex does. You know, <laughs> a after uh, going to see Dragon Force the other week, I got to be honest with you. Um, a lot of bands are starting to stream their shows on Twitch. The Agonist yeah. is doing it right now. Dragon Force did it. Of course, Dragon Force is ridiculous. They're hilarious. They're that was just funny. But um, I went to go see Ginger back in December before all that stuff went off on them and suicide silence opened up for them and i don't know how much you know about i don't know if you've ever met or talked to any of those guys from suicide silence yeah yeah we played a few shows with them eddie went off like eddie went off and i ran into him after the show and he's just like dude i know who you are and i'm like what the hell how do you know who i am and he's like <laughs> you know and i'm just and it just freaked me out but Eddie was just a great guy. Like he just grabbed me in a big bear hug and I'm like, dude, you're so sweaty. You, you, <laughs> you, you sweating so bad. But um, no, it's just an energy. It, there's something about the type of music that Suicide Silence, Malevolence, and quite a few bands that would used to be kind of like, oh, that's kind of a niche. That's really too heavy. That's too heavy for, dude, you go to these shows and it's not just the mosh heads anymore. It's like, I'm like, no. that, I think that's a grandma over there. Greatest story ever. And I just, I'm, I'm, this, this one is worth hearing. I went to the Ginger Show in the House of Blues in New Orleans. And I have a picture of this guy, okay? Um, you, you know what an Amish guy is, right? Yeah. Spenders, the beard, you know, the whole nine yards. After the show, I walked up to this guy. He's sitting in the VIP table area. Old dude, like in his 80s. Sitting there, suspenders, white shirt, pants. His, he's bald up top, long beard. And he's just sitting there doing like this. 
the entire suicide silence set. Eddie crowd dives. He's just like Ginger comes up. Eugene's doing his his thing right. Toddy's just freaking out the crowd. He's just like this. After the show, walked up to him and I said, "Excuse me, sir. I just I just gotta ask you. Um, is this like your first metal show?" And he's like, "Are you kidding me? I have a membership to this venue. I never miss a metal show in ten years." He's like, I've seen everybody. And he says, I come out here and I just love it. I just enjoy it. He says, I love the energy. I love the sound. He says, my favorite part though is, and this is, this is what you're going to appreciate more than anything. That old dude is in his 80s. And his wife had passed away a few years back. All of his grandkids have moved on. He's like, I live, a, I live by myself. I own three companies. This dude is a multimillionaire grandpa. He goes to metal shows and he says, my favorite thing is when I see like that guy that was screaming and the crowd was holding him up. And I was like, yeah, that's Eddie. And he's like, yeah, Eddie's giving his heart to those people. Those people are taking it and they're making it way bigger and they're giving it back to him. That's my favorite part of seeing metal music. And I was like, so what kind of genre of music do you love? He goes, well, I kind of grew up uh, country. I enjoy, um, enjoy some blues. I love a good blues show. I was like, Do you ever, have you ever loved metal? He goes, didn't love metal until a friend of mine wanted to see a band here. And he didn't tell the name. But I knew it was going to be a metal show. And he didn't have tickets, but I had this membership and this reserved seat every time they have a show. And when I went to go see that show and I saw the crowd take energy and send it back to the, to the artist, and there was this connection. Because I've never missed one since. And the list of artists. This old dude. This papa. Paul Paul. Up with his <laughs> suspenders. Oh, look. The guy sounds like an absolute G. He looked like it. Dude, he looked like an MP from, Not from uh, Nottingham is what he looked like. Um, he was old white dude, right? <laughs> and he was just like, he, he started naming this list of every of the all these artists he's seen and i'm like when i grow up <laughs> i won't be this guy so yeah out of the mouth of babes from the wisdom of old people alex thank you so much and uh that's gonna end our interview i hope you have an awesome show and everyone in the u.s malevolence is coming for you and it's way better than that movie with um uh, what's her name <laughs> <laughs> But, I have no idea. <laughs> oh my God, M Maleficent with with uh, Angelina Jolie. Uh, I haven't seen it. Okay. Okay, thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, dude, you're supposed to know everything that is close to your name, but not. It's okay. okay all I know, is, all I know, is that malevolence is a fucking. Lego Star Wars shit, and I every day get tagged in pictures of people building fucking Lego Star Wars shit. That's all I know. I, I'm sorry. I, the last Lego I did was a four foot Saturn V rocket for my daughter, and then the one we did before that was the the one from Sabaton with the sound stage and the tank and the and Joachim doing this, but he's a Lego. I've been anyway. got Lego. That, that Lego mix. That's hard. That's hard. Uh, Malevolence Lego merch would be a lorry and it would be Conan <laughs> with one of those white sleeveless shirts and yeah, he'd be in the, like the driver's seat <laughs> and, 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 and it would have like you know you have the like the, the kung fu grip right for the drummer you know you know it would yeah. it, it, I mean, definitely definitely you know uh, Charlie would have like four arms on his Lego guy because it looks like he's playing with four arms and of course um, Josh's neck would be like he'd be the only Lego bobblehead, and um, yeah, so it, you know that would be a malevolence kit. You know, it'd be cool. And then then the lorry would open up, and it would be like a rock stage, and you I'd could get down for that. yeah, I'd and be you, really down for that. and you could just and then you, it would come with the optional pack of a thousand a thousand little fans, all with all with baseball caps holding pints. It, it would be great. All right, so um, he gave me his answers after we stopped the tape, right after we talked about Lego. And his answers are amazing. 
So that's my interview with Malevolence. They are incredible people. We already knew they were a great band, but they're just guys, man. They're just a bunch of guys who are friends, making music together, sharing their emotions and passions and music with the world. And uh, it's their time. And I'm happy to have gotten a chance to talk to him. And I know when they come to the U.S., it's literally going to be insane. And I can't wait to hear about it. All right, well, that's it. Um, if you want to know how to win that stuff, you got to go to my Discord. The link to my Discord is in the description below. Please check it out there. Now, just letting you know, if you answer a bunch of stuff, it's not going to help you. You got to put the number, and you can put first show, and then dash, and put your answer. The first correct answer that Alex gave me is going to win. You can only win one. You can answer all three, but you can only win one album. Okay? And even if you know the answer to all of them, and you, you put three answers and they're all correct, you're gonna, I'm going to check you as the winner on one, and then we'll see who else gets the answer that's correct. Fair enough? We'll see you on Discord. All right, guys. Malevolence. New album, May 20th. Malicious Intent. Get it while the getting's good. Because I think all those special vinyls are going to sell out pretty fast. Get your tickets now for the U.S. shows. My name is Old School Nerd. And what can I say? These guys are incredible. We'll see you guys later. Peace.